It was a season of ups and downs with ingenious new twists and a stacked cast. G'day guys, welcome back to Snuffed, where we discuss everything about the greatest game on television, Survivor. Today we'll be taking a look back at Survivor South Africa, Immunity Island, and reflecting on the biggest blindsides, most shocking twists, and everything else that occurred over 39 days on the Wild Coast. What a season it was. A brilliant twist in Immunity Island, and a cast of so many fun characters right from the get-go. We got a taste for what this season would become, and I really loved that this whole season started out with a random draw for starting tribes. We had two tribes, Vuna wearing orange and Zumba in green, and essentially Nico just handed out buffs. The tribes weren't predetermined, which was a big con of the previous season, Island of Secrets, and we got the Vuna tribe, which possessed Anesu, Kala, Chappies, Kiran, Mike, Paul, Pinty, Santani, Tyson, and Wada, while the Zumba tribe had Amy, Anella, Dino, Jason, Marisha, Nicole, Kihan, Rainier, Sean, and Tereso, and straight away we got a sample of what the rest of the season would be like in the opening reward challenge, where basically they were foraging for all sorts of supplies. There were immunity necklaces up for grabs, and Dino went after the immunity necklace, painting a little bit of a target on his back, while Rainier actually picked up a tribe advantage, which benefited the Zumba tribe quite well. We got to camp, and basically all hell broke loose. Um, mainly on the Zumba tribe, we focused on in episode one, and really the whole tribe got together, except for Kihan and Sean, who really isolated themselves from the rest of the tribe, trying to find a clue to the idol in the bag of rice, when they really fanned it off to Amy, saying they were looking for a flint, which we all know was a lie. And straight away, the the target was on their back. We got a fire-making challenge for a fire kit that was contested between Chappies representing Vuna and Jason representing Zumba, and Chappies ended up winning that fire-making challenge, winning a fire-making kit for his tribe, but the two of them got diplomatic immunity, a new twist in the game, which essentially assured them if they ever felt unsafe, they could play their diplomatic immunity and switch to the next tribe, basically keeping them safe from that vote but then having to build new alliances on a new tribe. Some of it didn't even come into play in the season, unfortunately, but a really cool twist nonetheless, and, you know, something I could see coming back in the future, and hopefully um, at some point in the future it's used in a situation where someone is in the minority and they can use diplomatic immunity to save themselves. Thuna won the first immunity challenge, which sent... Zamba to Tribal Council, and Teresa became the first person to be sent to Immunity Island. Essentially, Immunity Island, similar to Exile Island or Ghost Island in a sense, one player selected after each episode by the winning tribe um, to be sent to Immunity Island, and they get the opportunity to either stay and play or give up and go. So stay and play, they can play for a reward which is on the line. If they win, they receive that reward. If they lose, they lose their vote at the next Tribal Council, whereas give up and go, essentially, they don't get that immunity necklace which is assured with them in stay and play, but they're able to go back to camp and vote with their tribe, and they're able to actually bequeath the necklace to someone else on their tribe to keep them safe. So a really cool twist, and I thought really well balanced. And in this first episode, Teresa really running with the theme. She's not afraid to stay and play and take on the challenge as an idle clue up for grabs, but unfortunately she loses that challenge. Meanwhile, back at the Zumba camp, though, all hell really breaks loose. Jason Brookstein, really, I think the Zane Knight of Survivor South Africa, absolutely imploding his game. He was in a strong position, really, as the leader of the tribe, um, putting his hand up to build the shelter because he's an engineer and draftsman, and the target was really pointed on him after he tried to lobby to save Sean, really putting his neck on the line, and in the end, um, throwing Amy under the bus, which really caused Rainier and Anella and also Dino to panic a little bit, so they wanted to turn the vote back on Jason, sensing he was a little bit too unpredictable. So at Tribal Council, Jason became the first boot, being voted out in a 7-2 vote. And headed into the second episode, really, it was the Vuna tribe that were then on Struggle Street. Zamba won the next immunity challenge, and Santini was sent to Immunity Island. The Zamba tribe essentially made the decision that because she was the weakest member of the Vuna tribe, she would be the best person to send to Immunity Island, because 
She was going to be the obvious vote, given that she wouldn't be able to compete too much in challenges. Might as well keep her safe another day and force the Vuna tribe to turn on one of their stronger members. Santini took on the challenge. Again, she decided to stay and play, and she won an idol clue. Back at Vuna camp, though, it was Carla and Mike who really sensed themselves as being on the bottom, similar to Sean and Kihan's position on the Zumba tribe in the first episode. They were really isolated away from everyone else. But Carla had built a little bit of a relationship with Karan, who also had Anasu and Wada in his pocket. So a great person to pitch the plan to. She sort of sensed that Pinty was being a little bit dominant around camp, really bossing everyone around. Anasu sort of in the middle, though, because she had an alliance already existing with Chappies, Pinty, and also Paul on the outside of that alliance. But in the end, they basically decided to keep the tribe strong, keep the camp free of any conflict, really. And Anesu and Kiran sided with Carla and Mike to vote out Pinty in a 6-2-1 vote. So on Immunity Island, not only did Santini come up with a clue for an idol back at her camp, but she also found another clue as well to a hidden immunity idol hidden at the other camp while there. And she shared one of these clues with Chappies, trying to build a relationship, because at this point in the game, she really didn't have anyone that she could trust. Chappies sort of sensed that Given that she was one of the weaker members in the game, maybe the other tribe will continue to send her to Immunity Island and that would be someone he would like to align with, given that she could get all these advantages potentially and really build up an arsenal between the two of them. Plans were really halted though, as we saw the first tribe swap in the game. Uh, tribes shaken up yet again. The new Vuna tribe consisting of Anesu, Kiran and Tyson from the old Vuna and from... The old Zamba switching over to the Vuna camp was Dino, Marisha, Nicole, Kihan, Rainier, and Teresa, while the Zamba tribe, they had three people as well that stayed at their old camp, that being Amy, Anella, and Sean, while they were joined by Carla, Chappies, Mike, Paul, Santini, and Wada. At the reward challenge, Santini decided to inform Paul of the idol clue, and basically said to him, well look, if you get in a one-on-one -on -one challenge with Tyson, tell him where the idol is at and we can keep the Vuna tribe in the majority here and maybe upset the Zamba tribe by eliminating one of their stronger members. And it goes exactly to plan. Paul shares the idol clue with Tyson. Tyson goes back to camp and he finds the a great advantage to hold this early in the game. Vuna end up win immunity and they send Amy to the Island of Secrets. She, again, decides to stay and play. Uh, this instance, though, she is offered the reward of a tribe raid. If she wins, her tribe can raid the other camp. If she loses, the other tribe gets to raid their camp. Unfortunately for Amy, she loses. And a tribal council. Um, Mike is really trying to ensure that the Vuna tribe remain united and that they keep their majority. He calls a body corporate amongst the old Vuna members, but it doesn't play out in the end because Anella and Sean basically flip to the other side, and in the end, Mike is voted out in a 5-3 vote. Paul, at this stage, was really starting to eat his way out of the game, eating way too much food, more than he really should be, and it put a target on his back, especially from Carla. There was a little bit of a shaky moment there in the season where Sean had, I believe it was an allergic reaction, and just breaking out, and he received medical attention, but was all clear to go ahead in the game, Vuna won immunity for the second time in a row, sending Zamba back to tribal council. Carla was sent to Immunity Island, and she decided at this point she was best placed to give up and go and go back to camp so she would be able to vote with Wada to try and help flip things against Paul. And that's exactly how things played out. Paul's target was put in his back because he was eating way too much food at camp, and he was voted out in a 5-2-1 vote. In the next episode, both tribes will end up going to Tribal Council with only a reward up for grabs, which Nicole won for her tribe. They received some nachos and margaritas. And Teresa not really having an opportunity at this point to actually vote with anyone, given that the only time she'd been to Tribal Council, she had the assurance from Immunity Island and also didn't have a vote, so she really didn't have any bargaining power at this point. Having not created any relationships, she tried to pitch to Rainier and Dino that she actually had the idol in her possession, and that became a key point of this episode. Really, it was between Teresa and Tyson, both apparently having idols and determining 
what was the best way to really get out of that? How could we create a contingency plan to get around this a little bit? Inesu was sent to Immunity Island and she received the Tribal Council Pass, which was able to be played up until the final seven, winning that. And back at camp, uh, Amy ended up flipping the vote on Carla, really rallying to try and get her out of the game. Teresa was voted out in a 2-1-0 vote after Tyson negated four votes. And for Carla, her time was up in the game. After losing Mike a couple episodes, but also having blindsided Pinty and Paul, being the mastermind, her time was up and her torch was snuffed in a 5-2 vote. There was yet another tribe swap in sight, and Amy, Anesu, Chappies, Marisha, Nicole, Rainier, and Sean were on the new Vuna tribe, and on the new Zamba, it was Anella, Dino, Kiran, Kihan, Santani, Tyson, and Wada. Before that, though, we did get a reward challenge with the old tribes, and actually Chappies was just an absolute hero in that challenge. The Vuna tribe did win that reward, but Chappies was... An absolute hero, acting as a lifesaver to save both Anella and Santini from the Rapids in what was a really stressful challenge for those two, um, basically nearly drowning because the, the river was running at such a rapid pace that it really was quite dangerous and luckily Chappies was there to save the day. The new Vuna tribe won the immunity challenge and Rainier basically pitched to save Smash and keep him safe. So Smash was sent to Immunity Island and there was an extra vote up for grabs, which he lost the challenge, unfortunately, losing his vote. But regardless, he, he was still in a bad position anyway. So he was glad to have that immunity necklace around his neck. Back at camp, though, Tyson found the idol yet again after Santini made a little bit of a faux pas in telling him that, you know, there, there was another clue in the game and Tyson really waged revenge against Dino, at this point, wanting to get him out of the game. Wada, meanwhile, was beginning to gun for Santini, but Santini played the idol for herself, negating two votes from the old Zamba members in Dino and Kihan, and in the end, Dino was voted out in a 4-0 vote. We then had another instance where the Vuna tribe won immunity, and they also got videos from home. Smash went to Immunity Island once again. This time he won in the challenge, though, which was great for him. He received a tribal insurance pass, which essentially gave him an extra vote. We had a fun moment with Rainier approaching Chappies with an alliance and really downplaying his survivor fandom, thinking that it was all about the physical aspect of the game, while Chappies really told him, well, no, it's, it's not all physical. You've also got to consider the social and strategic aspects. And Rainier said, well, I, I didn't know that. Maybe I can come along with you, come along for the ride and, and be a little minion. You can tell me what to do and teach me how to play the game when Really, Rainier was one of the biggest super fans on this season, really knowing how the game works, and really fun to see him downplay his threat level and really manipulate his position within the game so that he was viewed as less of a threat and wasn't targeted and sort of seen as this dumb jock sort of character. But in the end of Tribal Council on the Zumba tribe, Kihan got her torch snuffed, really is the only other option from the old Zumba tribe, with Anella having individual immunity once again, which he received from Immunity Island. Kihan voted out in a 4-1 vote. Before the merge, Marisha ended up finding the idol, which was great for her, but it wouldn't really come in handy because the writing would be on the wall for Marisha at this point because we merged at 12 people to form the Osandile tribe and Santini went back to Chappies, told him that Tyson had the idol and really were just spread around camp like wildfire at that point. Tyson came up with a plan for the Vuna tribe to maintain their majority by working together by targeting Nicole, but actually ending up voting for Marisha at Tribal Council, trying to play a decoy in case the Zumba tribe did have an immunity idol. Kiran outlasted Anesu in the immunity challenge after three and a half hours, deciding to send Tyson to Immunity Island. Tyson, he decided to give up and go, knowing that he was needed back at camp in order to have his vote count at Tribal Council because they were in the minority at this point, a two-person minority at this point, so they needed every vote they could possibly get in order to keep their hopes alive in the game. At Tribal Council, Tyson bequeathed his necklace to Wada, keeping her off the chopping block, and Smash used his tribal insurance to take a vote off Chappies. But Tyson sensed that Chappies was going to be the target, given it was a massive immunity threat. Everyone from the Zumba tribe wanted to get him out, so he played his idol for Chappies, 
Negate in sixth vote, and Ranier played their idol for Nicole, keeping her safe, thinking that she was the plan for the Vuna tribe. But in the end, they were completely fooled as Marisha was voted out in a 4-0 vote after Chappies negated those six votes. Inesu was actually working with the Zumba tribe in the previous vote, and Santini actually told Nicole that she shouldn't trust Inesu, and she was actually working with the Vuna tribe and wasn't really with the Zumba tribe at that point. At the reward challenge, they found a clue at a feast. Amy, Chappies, Rainier, Santini, Tyson, and Wada all send in that clue. And with Karan winning immunity, Wada was sent to Immunity Island. She decided to give up and go, knowing again, despite there being an idol on Immunity Island, she knew that her vote was needed at this point, and it was more important to build those strong relationships than get an idol which could be played at any point in the game. Wada ended up bequeathing her necklace to Tyson, and they got Anesu back on their side to eliminate Sean in a 6-5 vote, although Anesu really wasn't sure as to where she stood in the Vuna Alliance going forward, and was really starting to plant seeds to get one of them out. She pulled aside Chappies and started to plot Operation Destiny to hopefully blindside Kiran and Tyson, but that was all thrown into the ditch when the Tide Destinies twist was revealed. A great twist in theory, but... The, the chances of the pairs being split among all tribal lines were just too slim, and it ended up happening. Amy and Ronier joined together, Tyson and Wada, Anesu and Kiran, Chappies and Santini, and the final pair being Nicole and Smash. Nicole ended up winning immunity, and they also won the chance to go to a theme park as part of the reward, so... Nicole and Smash decided to take Amy and Ronier with them, which kind of backlashed a little bit because they left all the Vuna members back at camp to strategize, and essentially they plotted this plan to get rid of Ronier, get him out of the game, and keep Vuna strong going forward. Inesu told Chappies about her tribal council pass, and they did kind of toy with the idea of putting Operation Destiny into play, and in the end, they couldn't really get Santini's assurance in the vote. So they went for the easy vote, getting rid of Rainier, voting him out. Amy joined him on the jury by default because of the Tide Destiny's twist, unfortunately, despite receiving no votes throughout the entirety of the game. Rainier really played it up at the Tribal Council, though, to try and shift the target off him by pretending he had an idol, but really everyone called his bluff and... You know, he, he didn't count for him. Really unfortunate to see him go because he was such a fun character and really and really picked up the strategic aspect of the game very, very quickly while also being a massive physical immunity threat. So Smash and Nicole were really on the bottom of the tribe at this point, but Smash was actually approached by Wada, Tyson, and Kiran to combine as part of a final four and vote Anesu out at the next tribal council while Anesu tried to appeal to Smash asking him to join her in voting out either Tyson or Karan to really upset the balance of power in the game. At the immunity challenge, there was also a massive bowl of spaghetti bolognese up for grabs, and unfortunately, no one except for Chappies and Nicole actually competed for individual immunity, which really disappointed Nico, and, and you really saw how disappointed he was in the fact that these players weren't trying their hardest in the immunity challenges, and with it being a two-person race, Chappies ended up beating Nicole in the immunity challenge. He decided to send Santini to Immunity Island, where they already knew there was an idol, she found that, and she also played for the fire idol, but she unfortunately lost the challenge, but, you know, still came away with, essentially, immunity for that episode. Despite losing her vote, she also had an idol anyway, which could be used down the line. Back at camp, it really all hinged on Anella and where his vote stood at that point, but Chappies couldn't get him on side to try and eliminate Tyson at this point in the game, so in the end, Anesu was voted out in a 5-2 vote, and on her way out, she decided to gift Chappies her tribal council pass. Chappies was really beginning to find himself on the outs of the tribe. He was sneaking rice at night, and it really put a target on his back, especially after the auction, when he won a jar of sweets and brought that back to camp with him, stashing it in his bag, which a lot of the other players really thought poorly of because they believed it was against the spirit of the game. At the auction, Tyson also bought uh, an advantage in the immunity challenge, and Nicole won an immunity island send ticket, and 
when it came to the challenge, Tyson was able to skip the first stage of the challenge, but really didn't help him out in the end because Chappies, once again, won individual immunity, and Nicole decided to send herself to Immunity Island, where she decided to stay and play, and she won the fire rattle at the end of the day. There was plenty of drama back at camp, with Chappies receiving a lot of flack for not only stealing rice, but also for stashing sweets in his bag, and it really put the target firmly on his back, although he had individual immunity, so he was really guaranteed safety at that next tribal council, which put a little bit of a target on Santini's back, Santini becoming then the proxy vote. And as part of the auction, Wada actually received a bag of rice that would last the tribe the rest of the game. To ensure that Chappies didn't go against them at tribal council, Wada said that she would take the rice with her to tribal council, so essentially, if she was voted out, they wouldn't have any rice left in the game, really blackmailing the rest of the tribe, and Chappies then hatched an evil plan to steal that bag of rice, fill it up with sand, and instead transfer the rice to his bag. That way, when they voted out wider at Tribal Council, he could come back to the camp as a hero, and at Tribal Council, really, all hell broke loose. Nico just sat back as Wider and Tyson really dug into Chappies, arguing about the spirit of the game and how Chappies was sneaking away rice and sweets and really playing to an unfair advantage. Nico saying, Nico sitting back and then saying that they were really being a little bit hypocritical given that previously on a reward challenge where there was a bry involved, they ended up bringing meat back for themselves as well and shared that amongst themselves. So we really called them out on their hypocrisy there. Chappies played the Tribal Council pass on Anella, sending Anella back to camp and excluding him from the vote. Santini played her idol, negating three votes, and in the end, Wada was sent home with two votes against her. The next episode saw the family visit, and Chappies actually outlasted Tyson, but there was a twist with this family visit. Instead of picking people to come back to camp, everyone would get to go back to camp, and they would receive a burger feast back at camp, but Chappies was actually given the opportunity to pick two people he could go against in the immunity challenge. He decided to pick Santini and Anello, given those were probably the two weakest members in the physical challenges to date. Back at camp, Kiran was being very savvy and noticed that basically at every reward challenge, there was always an advantage or an idol hidden behind the logo of the sponsor's sign. And he recruited Nicole's brother, Peter, essentially getting a piggyback from Nicole's brother and coming away with the immunity idol, which, which annoyed Nicole a little bit, but she was kind of understanding given that it wasn't Chappies or Santini. At least the idol was staying in their alliance. Chappies ended up winning individual immunity once again, and Kiran actually came up with a plan to eliminate Nicole, believing her to be a challenged threat. Smash then brought this back to Nicole and made her aware of the plan, so Santini suggested a pretty reasonable idea to split the vote two and two between the four of them and really leave Karan and Tyson on the outs. Which made sense because everyone knew that Karan had an idol and he couldn't play the idol for both of them, so regardless of who he played the idol for, one of them would be going home and Nicole, Santini, or whoever was in that alliance would be safe if the votes were placed against them, but Anella really got his ego in the way at this point, wanting the plan to be his own. He was rubbed a little bit the wrong way, went back to Karan and really just blurted out his whole game and said, you know, Kiran, I I was working with you, and then I told the plan back to Nicole, and we plotted this elaborate plan to get Tyson out of the game, but then Santini suggested that we should split the votes instead to keep it safe, and now I'm at this stage, and I don't want to go ahead with them, I want to go back with you, and it really alarmed Kiran, and it really put Anella, actually, on the outs. A lot of people pointing to him and saying, he just exploded his game, um, but unfortunately it looked like Karan's back was against the wall now. He played his idol at Tribal Council, and Nicole ended up playing her fire idol, forcing Santini and Tyson to a fire-making challenge. Santini ended up losing that fire-making challenge, and she was sent to the jury. At the final five now, Chappies continued his challenge streak, winning reward yet again. He decided to take Anella along with him, and while they were there having their little feast, he proposed potentially aligning with Nicole and taking out Kiran, and basically just combining as a threesome to eliminate the old Vuna members. And really, it was the only option left on the table because Chappies won individual immunity, so 
Anella not really having a choice to turn on his closest ally, his only remaining Zumba member in Nicole, who has been working with basically throughout the duration of the game. Anella, Nicole, and Chappies all combined to vote out Kiran, sending him home in a 3 2 vote. Chappies again was up to his usual antics. He was eating coconuts and sugarcane on his own, really isolating himself from the rest of the tribe, but it was all fueled to help him to another individual immunity win, which essentially guaranteed him safety until the final four. And there was a twist here, which again, a- another really fun twist. Essentially, it was a little bit of a reward where the person who won individual immunity would be given the chance to have breakfast with a Jura and they'd be able to hear where they were standing in the game and what they needed to do to get ahead, who they should be targeting, who they should be taking to the final tribal council. And Chappies decided to take Anesu to join him for breakfast and it really helped him out because he realised that Anella would be the best option to take to the final two, given that he was the person with the least respect on the jury and really his only assured vote at that point was from Sean. And that if he was to win and and make it to the final tribal council, he would really need to own up to his gameplay and probably get rid of Tyson at this next vote because Tyson was seen as the mastermind. At the feast, he was also given another advantage in the game. He was given the ability to eliminate a jury member. He decided to vote off Wada for the reason that if he was to sit at final tribal council, he wanted to get Wada out of the game because he knew that Wada was basically a guaranteed vote for Tyson. And at this point, he really viewed his best chance of winning in a final two scenario as being against Tyson, given that they both betrayed a lot of people. And also given that Tyson was the only other remaining Vuna and wanting to avoid that Zamba jury, which could sway a lot of votes towards someone like an Anella or a Nicole. So when at Tribal Council, Nico actually revealed that it would be a final two, Chappies went into panic mode. He pulled Nicole aside and said, we need to get rid of Anella now, let's target Anella. He pulled aside Tyson and said, let's get rid of Anella, this is going to be the plan, we can go forward to the final two at this point. And Chappies in the end, he he cast his vote toward Anella, but Tyson, foolishly, it ended up getting him voted out when he cast a vote toward Nicole, which essentially forced a 2-1-1 vote split. Tyson there eliminated from the game and it meant we had a final three of Chappies, Nicole and Smash. They went into the final individual immunity challenge which was Hands on Hard Idol. I'm always glad to see that challenge being used for a final immunity challenge and Anella, he did a great job to last for a little bit over an hour beating his personal best in the game but he was the first to fall and then Chappies fell not too long after with Nicole ending up winning individual immunity, meaning that the power of the game was in her hands. She was assured of a place at Final Tribal Council, and now she just had to decide whether she wanted to bring Chappies or Anella to the end with her. Anella really pitched the case that Chappies still had the respect of a lot of the jury being a challenged beast, and if she took out Chappies from the game, it would be a massive feather in her cap, and she could use that move of taking out the biggest threat in the game as her final piece in her jury speech. Whereas Chappies really appealed to her by saying that he spoke with Anesu at the jury member breakfast, and Anesu said that Anella at this point was the best chance of winning in the game because Sean was really pitching hard to Jury Villa that he was the one that was playing the best game. So Chappies had burnt a lot of people and Nicole would have a much better chance of beating him in the end than she would of beating Anella. But in the end, she went with the argument that it's best just to get the biggest physical threat out of the game because Chappies has been so dominant, winning a record seven individual challenges. She took Chappies out of the game and Chappies was voted out at the final three, leaving a final two of Nicole and Anella, the original Zumba members who had been the only remaining Zumba members since the final eight. And at Final Tribal Council, Anella really pitched the case that he had built strong social relationships with all the players in the game. He kept a couple of players he wanted to remain close with, three players that he wanted to remain close with in the game, those being Amy, Rainier, and also Dino, who was seen as a little bit more of a wild card, but someone who he could benefit with, and that he used the rest of the time really just to build social relationships and hear of these different plans while then being able to bring that back to his majority alliance building that strong relationship with Kiran and Tyson and having that flexibility in that game. While Nicole really pitched integrity, honesty, 
reliability and trust. She mentioned the fact, obviously, that she took out the Challenge Beast and got rid of Chappies from the game. She was underestimated and she was the only one that played against Chappies in that immunity challenge where everyone else sat out for Spaghetti Bolognese. She also said that Anella was saved multiple times in the game by the Zumba tribe, not only when she won the Tired Destiny's Twist, keeping him safe, but also when Rainier saved him by sending him to a mini island on two separate occasions. Also mentioning that the only reason why Anella was in the final three was because she brought him to the end and she was the one that took out Chappies by outlasting him in that final immunity challenge. At the final tribal council, Anella was criticised for letting his ego get in the way at times, especially when it came to that 2-2 split vote that Santini proposed, but Sean, on the other hand, really pitched hard for Anella at the final tribal council, suggesting that a lot of people were hurt and saying that they thought Anella was with them, but that was actually a good reflection of Anella's social game. The fact that he had been able to build those strong social relationships with them and blindside them, sending them to the jury, and that that was something that the jury should respect. But in the end, Sean was the only vote for Anella to win the game, and Nicole won in an 8-1 vote to be crowned the sole survivor. Overall, I really loved this season. Not only was it a great twist, and I really enjoyed the Immunity Island twist, and also a lot of the other little advantages throughout the game, like the Tribal Council Pass, like Diplomatic Immunity, even though it wasn't used, the Fire Rider was fun, the Jurors Breakfast was fun, the Tide Destinies could have been fun had it been used in the right way, and, you know, the Zumba and Vuna alliances, the pairs, hadn't really stuck together. It would have been really fun to see, but unfortunately, the way the rocks were drawn, it didn't make for too much entertaining television, but something I'd like to see come back in the future, because I think it does have a lot of potential as a twist. I thought the Immunity Island twist as a whole was balanced really well with the stay and play option, and also the give up and go, and if you decide to stay and play, you'd lose your vote, so there was always a consequence of what could happen. And if you did decide to stay and play, there was always the chance that you might lose your vote. So there were always ramifications in the game and it wasn't too overpowered. While give up and go, again, was a legitimate option because it meant that you could build those relationships in the game and use your vote really as leverage as opposed to using a potential idol as leverage. And again, the cast was just really strong. There's a lot of people who I'd love to see return. Carla was an amazing pre merge character. I really enjoyed seeing her plot those blind sides of Paul and Pinty. She really emerged as a major force. Um, also in the Vuna tribe, there was obviously Anesu, who was a very socially aware player in the game. Chappies winning seven straight challenges, a record in Survivor, and I would have loved to see him win that final immunity challenge. I'm really happy with Nicole as a winner, but Chappies would just be a unicorn of a winner. It would have been amazing to see him win that game in the end. Kiran being one of my favourite players this season. Again, similar to Onesu, really socially aware, but also having a lot of strategy behind him. And he was really the mastermind for a lot of this season. He won two immunity challenges, and in the end, a lot was building against him, and he was seen as the brains in that operation between Kiran and Tyson. And it all caught up to him in the end, Anella really flipping his vote and forcing the target onto Kiran. Again, Santini absolutely shocked me. I was expecting her to be one of the first boots, but she emerged as a massive character. She used Immunity Island to her advantage, finding numerous advantages, and also building a relationship with Chappies and really going all the way. I think one of the great surprise packets of this season, and Tyson as well, someone that really masterminded a lot of the strategy and worked under the radar. A little bit of the Godfather type character Tyson was. I really liked seeing him throughout the game. And on the Zumba tribe as well, you had some great characters. Amy, again, someone I like to see come back. I think she was really screwed over by that Tide Destiny's twist and had a lot of potential in the game. At one point in the game, I was really thinking she was the best placed to win in the end because she was really, um, after the tribe swap, working and, and figuring out what the best way to go forward was working with Sean very closely to flip the vote and get rid of Paul and then to flip the vote and get rid of Carla. So working both sides really, really well. Smash obviously made it all the way to the final tribal council and did a great job throughout the game, but he just couldn't match it with Nicole, who again played such a strong social game, having those relationships, being the only female in the game to win individual immunity and saving him on multiple occasions, which didn't work too well for him. Dino was my preseason favourite um, winner pick, so I was a little bit sad to see him go at the expense of Tyson's idol, but again, a great character and a, a little bit chaotic at times, always panicking, 
Jason, one of the best first boots, I think, in international survivor history. A real big flame out, but so much fun. And I think if Jason came back on a second chance type season, I would not be complaining at all. And I think he could do quite well. Just if he simmered down his game a little bit, again, Marisha, a massive challenge beast. Um, Nicole, as I mentioned, ended up winning the game. Renier really surprised me as well. He was just the perfect storm of physical threat and strategic mastermind. But again, that Tide Destiny's twist just caught up to him and he didn't have the opportunity to work with Nessu and Chappies to formulate that Operation Destiny. But overall, I really liked the cast. The challenges were great. The location was beautiful. I loved it. At times, I really forgot that we were in South Africa and I thought we were almost in Samoa. But, um, you know, just great to see that production came up with the idea to be able to film domestically. And they came up with a brilliant season, a brilliant twist. And honestly, I think Survive South Africa and Meeting New Island at this point is probably one of, if not my favourite, international Survivor seasons we've seen probably rivals Australian Survivor Champions versus Contenders 2 for me in terms of my favourite, but certainly when you look at it in terms of US Survivor seasons, it would easily be top 10. The final Tribal Council outcome was a little bit disappointing not to see Chappies win because that would have been an amazing streak to see him win and, and fight his way all the way to the end. Very similar to a Mike Holloway bit being such a big character, but um, I, was, I was very happy with how the final Tribal Council played out with Nicole winning. But yeah, just the cast, the twist of Amin Island was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed this season and I can't wait for Survivor South Africa hopefully to come back for season nine next year because Survivor South Africa really has shown itself to be one of the strongest international versions of the show. Did you enjoy Survivor South Africa and Amin Island? Who were some of your favourite castaways? Be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, please feel free to give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel for all the fixins. Stay tuned later this week as we take a look at Nicole Willman's journey to the title of Soul Survivor. In the game of Survivor, you must do everything it takes to fight until the very end. Grab your torches, head back to camp. Good night.